This is the midweek edition of your two on your side town hall here at 530. Hello everybody. I'm Michael Wooten and I'm Mary Alice Demler. We have answers to several of your questions that you've texted us. The number is 849 2200. Now ahead. We're talking supply shortages. You know some products are hard to find at stores, right? Well, now something else to add to the list, and we're going to find out why. Plus bowling alleys and gyms, two places still shut down. We look at when that might change. And the most asked question that we've been getting lately, having to do with Hamburg Gaming at the fairgrounds. We'll get to all of that coming up. But we start today with the debate over whether or not to allow Amazon to move on to Grand Island. For months, we've reported on the proposal, and today the Grand Island Town Supervisor told us a final decision is likely just weeks away. In a moment, we're going to talk live with a key player in all of this, but first, what you need to know. So this is known as Project Olive, and even though there was some secrecy early on, it is about building a 3.8 million square foot, five-story tall facility for Amazon at a cost of about 300 million bucks. The National Distribution Center would be in the northwest corner of the island and just off the 190. Now this is important. The public will get to continue to weigh in during an open hearing that is scheduled for Thursday, August 13th. So that's a week from tomorrow. It will be in person with social distancing. So that's at 7 o'clock a week from tomorrow at Town Hall. And joining us live is Michael Huntress. He's the vice president of AquQuest Development, which owns the land where developers want to build this facility. Thanks for joining us. All right, Michael, earlier today I did an interview with Grand Island Supervisor John Whitney. He's also a former town engineer. Uh, he has not made up his mind yet um, on all of this. He says that the board is going to follow all the facts, and if it's good for the town, he'll vote to approve it. If he says it's bad for the town, he'll vote to reject it. I want you to listen, if you can, to part of the conversation that we had with him earlier today, and then we'll get your reaction. Mr. Supervisor, what are your concerns right now with this project as proposed? There's lots. There's traffic, there's noise, there's light, there's air pollution. Um, you know, all the all the concerns that our, uh, our citizens are bringing up. So, there, you know, there are many concerns still out there. Is it possible that those concerns can be adequately addressed, do you think? I certainly hope so. If, if well, they, they would have to be for us to vote yes on this project. So the supervisor there saying that um, there are myriad concerns. Um, just to start, I hope that you can address some of what he said there, specifically concerns around traffic, noise, and pollution, and people who say that um, you know this wouldn't be good for Grand Island. I guess I'd start by saying I think that the, the traffic on Grand Island over the last 10 years has decreased significantly. Um, we've owned the property for 30 years and we've watched the traffic counts go down each year. And I know that the impact on the South Grand Island Bridge and the North Grand Island Bridge from the trucks and the employees, they're talking about a two and a half to three and a half percent increase of traffic on those bridges on off peak hours. I mean, we're talking about the largest logistics company on the planet choosing a location. Traffic is a big concern to them too. And just a little bit more about traffic and j just to let you know, Mary Alice, um, I know that you're not able to hear her right, right now, but we're working on getting that fixed. I'm going to ask the question um, that she was going to ask you, though, because we were talking about it at my desk um, just earlier this afternoon. Um, she said she's lived, lived here 30 plus years, right? Drives by the 290 in Tonawanda, has seen the traffic back up there on the 190 many times onto the bridges, um, even before and after cashless tolling. Um, is it a hard sell to convince island residents that traffic is not going to be a mess if this huge facility goes in there? Michael, I don't think anybody likes change. And I think at the end of the day, what's most important to realize is that um, the largest logistics company on the planet isn't moving product and certainly doesn't want it sitting stalled at the bridge in traffic. I, I too have experienced going to Canada over the bridges on a Thursday or Friday night at five o'clock. And it, it used to be a nightmare with the tolls, but with the tolls gone now, the traffic is sig moved sig significantly better. And Amazon's not in the business of having their product sitting idle. So they're going to be moving product at night as the traffic studies show. 
Let me ask you also, um, we have here in Western New York over the years heard plenty of big promises from big companies coming in. I know there's not a direct comparison here to what Tesla did in in South Buffalo, but the jobs haven't panned out like we were promised before. Um, what do you say to, to people who are just generally skeptical about the benefits when you bring in one of these big outside companies like this? So, Michael, I guess in, in thinking about Tesla, Amazon, I believe, has been around since the early 90s. So this is a company that, especially after the pandemic we've experienced, is growing exponentially. And when they make a commitment in these markets, they're bringing in jobs. And right now, a thousand new jobs to us in Western New York with the unemployment rate at 13 and a half percent is a big deal. And they're also going to add 800 seasonal positions um, during the holidays. So I think it's difficult for us as a community to look at this and turn it away. And I do think that the, the benefit package that's been rolled out by the Erie County IDA is significant, but I also know that the incentives and the contributions Amazon will be paying in local taxes is, is massive and would be a huge influx and a great partner long term for the town of Grand Island. When it comes to kind of selling this to the public, at the end of the day, you need the votes on the town board to move forward. Um, but you also want to convince people who live there um, that this is a good thing. Obviously, one of the people who spoke at the last public meeting, it was done virtually, but she said, don't turn our residential island into Amazon Island. You mentioned that people oftentimes don't want change. But what do you say to those people who just like Grand Island the way it is now? They live there for a reason. They chose to be there. Some have been there for generation, generations, and maybe they don't want to see this change. How do you convince them otherwise? Well, Michael, the property has been zoned industrial for over 20 years. So I think that's probably one of the most important factors in our purchase of the land. Um, it, it's one of only a handful of industrial sites on the island. And, and frankly, if we can't build a, a warehouse on the I-190 throughway in Western New York, where are we going? I mean, it's, it's set up perfectly for exactly this. And again, I understand people don't like change. I have a hotel in my backyard um, that went up five years after I purchased my home, but the property was owned commercial. And, you know, the, the homes in the area, I appreciate what they're going through having um, a hotel in my backyard now. But I also know that the owner of that property was paying taxes on a commercially zoned site for years and was carrying a property for a long time that was to be developed commercially based on the comprehensive plan of that town, just like this is. Tomorrow we are going to have on um, the other side of this debate and the person who is um, heading up kind of the opposition to this. Um, I wonder if you can speak to that organization. As you know, um, people who are opposed to this project have gotten organized in a very substantial way. They are vocal, they are passionate in their opposition to this. Um, what do you make of that in terms of um, trying to kind of win this public relations battle? Michael, I think that we got to look at the economics of what's to come. Um, I, I believe that the incentive package that's been provided to the town of Grand Island, the, um, I guess, amount of $10 million is, is significant. I know the real estate taxes that will be paid by Amazon in the very first year is 20 times that of any other commercial landowner on the town of Grand Island, which is significant. So. While it will be a pilot program, it's still in the very first year at a discounted rate, 20 times that of any other commercial user. The height is an issue. I think that's of concern to the residents, but I offer you that, you know, the setback requirements of the town are 65 feet and many of the neighbors are seeing up to 2000 feet of buffer between the building and their property lines, which is, is significant. There's three other variances that otherwise would be needed um, without the PDD zoning. And those variances are actually positives. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're less parking, it's less light, and then there is a small setback variance too. But the height is the significant issue, and I, and I understand. And that's why we put a flag on the site to represent to everybody that the, the height of the building isn't as intrusive as you think at 90 feet. And, and to remind everybody that we do live in America and that the site was purchased for this use specifically. And um, we've been paying taxes on the property for that purpose for years. 
Michael Huntress is vice president of Aquest Development, which owns the property there. Thank you for coming on and taking the questions. Um, and again, the town supervisor told us earlier today that we should have a final decision on this, on whether or not it's going to proceed within just the next few weeks. So we'll be following it. Thanks for your time. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, yep. Michael. And we'll be hearing from the other side tomorrow at 530. That's right. Well, coming up on our town hall, answers to some of your COVID-19 questions about bowling alleys, gyms, and later, the Hamburg Casino. And as we go to break, saluting a Western New York sailor making her hometown proud, this is hospitalman Kaylee Madej. She's on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic, working at a naval hospital in Italy, a country that, as you know, was hard hit by the virus earlier this year. The Navy shared out this photo of the 2014 Narden Academy graduate.